start? Yes, uh, already I discussed uh, Indian sources yesterday. Today I will continue uh, the remaining uh, part that I have uh, started yesterday. Now I am going to discuss the object of the uh, the object of the Indian sources, the glorification of the kings rather than give a true picture of uh, their ta uh, their life and times. Raja Tharingani of Kalyana, a dynastic chronicles of the kings of Kashmir, written in Sanskrit in the 12th century, is the only work in ancient uh, Indian literature, which can be regarded as a his historical test in the true uh, sense of the world. The Raja Tharangini of Kalyana gives a reliable history of Kashmir, but it is not much valuable uh, for the general history of India. Now, I am going to uh, discuss uh, the numismatic uh, of India. That uh, I will uh, uh, continue in the next class. Hello, my students. Now, I am going to talk about the importance of the numismatic uh, in the sources of uh, Indian history and how uh, numismatics uh, are uh, important uh, to the writing of uh, Indian history. Uh, the numismatic is the study of coins. In comparison to the other sources, coins is pygmy. Coins are useful for testing the accuracy of the information supplied by literature. Some coins contain dates and they are useful in the construction of chronology. Coins also give us the names of king and location of coins helps to determine the extent of the territory of a king. The discovery of a large number of Roman coins confirms the fact that there was a active trade between India and the Roman Empire. All of us know that coin give an indication of the prosperity of the country and the kingdom. If people had gold or silver, they were prosperous. If coinage was copper only, then the case was otherwise. The symbol on the Gupta coinage refer to their zeal for Hinduism. On the whole, the historical evidence from the numismatic is supplementary and corroborative. It gives us only a few nuts, screws for the construction of history. Indian coins after the Gupta period do not give us much historical information. Now, with that, I end the importance of the numismatic. Hello, today, now I am going to discuss uh, the archaeology. All of you know that archaeology is the study of the material remains uh, of the first. Indian archaeology basically is a science of recent uh, growth, but uh, it has made great progress during that uh, brief uh, uh, periods. 
the indian antiquities was uh, started by scholars like uh, british william jones who founded the asiatic society of bengal in uh, 1784 uh, general cunningham who was uh, appointed as the archaeological surveyor gave us uh, information regarding the archaeology of uh, ancient uh, india he collected coins and uh, constructed so uh, conducted digging at uh, places like bodhgaya sanchi saranatha and uh, takshashila lord kazan uh, set up a separate department of uh, archaeology with uh, sir john marshall as uh, his uh, director under the supervision of john marshall ancient uh, cities of uh, takshashila and uh, pataliputra were excavated and uh, in uh, 1922-23 excavated uh, was uh, this uh, mohanji doro in sindh and uh, harappa in punjab information collected uh, from the sites of harappa and mohanji doro inspired sir john marshall to write his uh, a monumental work on indus valley civilization excluding epigraphy and uh, numismatics archaeology refers to monuments and uh, other material relics of the past monuments you know that constitute direct evidence of the past and it is unedited by any author they provide information regarding the cultural history of uh, ancient uh, india they also illustrate the development of art architecture and religion for most of them are structure do uh, a structure devoted to religion for prehistory our exclusive reliance is on archaeology however uh, for the historical world its service is supplementary archaeology and its value is increased when other sources dry up with that i end thank you